Hello everyone, uh, this is Coach Jorge, welcome back. Uh, today's video I'm going to be teaching you how you can save between 10 to up to 25 minutes at your next 70.3 or Ironman as long as you take care of the details, you pay attention uh, to things that you do, you practice certain skills and the best of all is that you can do this uh, without spending any money. It's just things that you already uh, have or you just need to practice on. So I hope you find this uh, useful and please enjoy. Let's start with the swim. Because of the format of different races, whether it's a mass start, a rolling start, or a wave start, swim starts can be pretty hectic. And then, if you add to the fact that a lot of swimmers haven't developed proper swim skills, you can lose a lot of time here. So the main thing that you can do in order to save some time during the swim on a race is to learn how to properly swim straight. Case in point, this remarkable video footage from Swim Smooth is from a 70.3 race at the finish and you can see on the uh, red uh, circles how swimmers they're just adding so much distance to their swim just because they cannot swim straight. So let's take an Ironman swim course. If you were to swim straight buoy to buoy and you're averaging 130 minutes per 100 yards you will be swimming around 104 hours however if you don't swim straight you could be adding like 5 to 10 yards every 100 yards for the entire course this can result on swimming the same seemingly course around 6 minutes slower so practice to learn how to swim straight swimming buoy to buoy Always try to keep the buoys in between your arms as a point of reference. Uh, breathe or sight more often, maybe every six strokes. And also learn how to bilateral breathe. Next we have the bike. The first thing you can work on, which is very simple, it's addressing your head position. Of course, a proper bike fit and attention to your gear and other things is very important, but I'll address that in another video. So assuming you have the right bike fit, you have to work on the way that you hold your position while you ride. The traditional is having the head exposed high in the wind. This results in greater frontal area, higher coefficient of drag, and slower time. But if you practice and you learn how to hide your head between your shoulders, then you're going to reduce your coefficient of drag. There are tools online that can help you estimate these. Something for instance like Best Buy Split would allow you to determine your coefficient of drag based on previous rides and determine your potential. Therefore, by working on your hair position, you can save anywhere between 1 minute for a 70.3 up to 4 minutes for an Ironman. Next is cornering. If you have the proper skills to corner when you're riding, you're going to lose less speed and therefore you're going to ride faster. Considering the average 70.3 or Ironman race can have a lot of turns, something like 10 or more, you can lose anywhere between 3 to 5 seconds per turn when you're riding. This can add up easily to something like 30 to 60 seconds depending on the distance and the number of turns. Therefore, it could easily uh, cost you somewhere between 1 to 2 minutes in your average race. On another video, I'll discuss the proper techniques for cornering. Next is proper gearing engagement when climbing, something that I see athletes tend to struggle regularly in training and in racing. The typical scenario is a rider will be cruising along and as they approach a climb, they don't do any adjustment. So as soon as they hit the climb, they go from riding at a particular speed to slow down significantly. Then they're forced to shift their gearing and by that time they have lost uh, so much momentum that they're going to uh, continue the climb at a slow pace. Therefore, let's say you're going to tackle a 60 foot climb and as you're approaching you don't do any gearing shifting and you go from rolling at 20 miles per hour as soon as you hit the climb you start slowing down significantly so you go to like uh, 18, 17, 14 and you ended up climbing at 11 miles per hour. On the other hand, instead of doing that, you actually shift preemptively as you approach the climb and you go from riding 20 miles per hour, you don't slow down as much and then you just slow down to like 19, 17 and you ended up climbing at 15 miles per hour because you have more momentum getting into the climb. Therefore, you can save somewhere around, you know, 5 to 10 seconds per climb depending on how long the climb is and how steep. But if you start adding up these and depending on the course, you can see how you can easily be saving anywhere between 1 to 3 minutes from a 70.3 to an Ironman or sometimes even more. A simple way to correct this is to preemptively shift as you approach a climb. For instance, if you're riding on the fr uh, front big ring 
and you are going to approach a climb to stay on the same uh, cadence and gear ratio what you can do is shift two to three sprockets down into a harder gear well almost simultaneously you're going to shift down into your small ring on the front and at this point you will pr uh, most likely have the similar cadence and gear ratio that you have on the big ring and an easier gear Therefore, now as you approach the hill, since now you are on the smaller ring on the front and you are on a proper gearing on the back, it will allow you to keep the same cadence, it will allow you to shift properly and to keep as much momentum as possible. Next we have the run. The most common mistake I see athletes doing when they're racing is that they don't run the tangents of the course. That is, most of the races they will measure the course on the shorter distance between the starting line and the finish line which means for a 70.3 or Ironman course the shorter distance may not mean running in the middle of the road in this case the red line represents a shorter distance to the finish line while the green line represents a longer path this is very common for an athlete to do on a race as they're running around other athletes or again they're not going through that tangents so if you do the latter, you can easily add between 1.5 to 2.5% to your distance. For a 70.3, they will mean running anywhere between 3.29 to 3.42 miles, while for an Ironman, it might be as much as 26.5 to 26.8 miles, resulting in anywhere between 2 to 6 minutes of extra time. Finally, we have the transition areas. This is a place where triathletes tend to lose a lot of time just because they're not organized or they don't practice. They tend to have very cluttered areas and these inevitably are gonna, uh, is going to slow them down. On the other hand, if you don't practice your transitions in your training, then it's not going to come as second nature as you are going through them. This can easily cost you between 30 seconds up to 2 minutes or more, depending on the size of the transition. To avoid that, keep it as simple as possible. For a 70.3, keep your area as clean as with the least amount of stuff that you need. And for an Ironman, keep your transition bags as clean as simple as possible. In summary, in the swim, try to swim as straight as possible, buoy to buoy, siding often, and this can result in savings of 3 to 6 minutes. On the bike, work on your head position, learning how to hide it between your shoulders, train your cornering skills, and work on your gear shifting so you can improve your climbing without losing much momentum. All can result in time savings of 4 to 10 minutes. On the run, simply learn how to run the tangents. Don't go wasting extra time or energy that you can save. The time savings can result in two to six minutes. Finally, the transitions. Remember to keep it simple and practice your swim to bike and bike to run transitions. Time savings can be one to two minutes. Overall savings, for a 70.3 you can save up to 10 minutes and for an Ironman, up to 25 minutes. So there you have it. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please let's leave us a like and share it with your friends. Also, you can leave us a comment or provide suggestions for future videos. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter where you can ask us questions and we'll be happy to help.